I don't know what happened in my video cut off, but I don't know, like, I don't know if I could be satisfied with even knowing. If I didn't know and I remained spiritually blinded to truths like that, it would be different, but I'm not blinded anymore, so I don't like the fact that I know you have this whole book written out for what basically what you put me here to do. There's no other purpose I could possibly serve. Anything, any life I choose to live contrary to what you've written for me and ordained for me would be a distraction and a complete waste of time. Even if I were to get saved, I'm not really fulfilling and living out my purpose. Like, that's what everybody is about here. My purpose, my destiny, I, I mean, their purpose is a false one. You know, people talk about that all the time. It's very cliche, but that's, that's, because everybody knows deep down inside that there's no point in being here unless you are fulfilling a purpose. So it's like everybody bears witness that there is a creator and that there is a God. Because you, you, you can't possibly tell me that you're just here to just live here and just feast as like some bottom feeder human some parasitical human that you have no purpose here that there wasn't a spiritual creator or force that put you here for a certain work everybody wants to believe it that's why they go to stuff like the new age so you already know that you're ordained to do something now working with god to do it that's a different thing it's going to require you to take off your garments and become holy and cleanse yourself you know to walk with him and that's different like i don't care i'll do it but i'm just saying um it would bother me to know that I'm living a half half full glass of Christianity when God, I can have more. It's, it's just something off about that. Like, he didn't die to give you a half Christianity. Like, that's, that's insulting. Like, to, to experience what Jesus experienced and you're comfortable with just half of what he wants to give you just because you don't want to do certain parts or, you know, meet certain requirements or prerequisites to really get that stuff, that's insulting. And it makes me feel like my, my life is pointless here. Even if I were to be comfortable to some degree, I can't say I would be fully comfortable if I wasn't doing everything that he purposed me to do because then I wouldn't experience him to the fullest because he is wh wherever he's written in my story. He's there. He's already been there. He's gone ahead of me. I'm not fulfilling that. So I'm not really experiencing God to his fullest potential to, to the point where I could. I don't want to be comfortable. I want to become Christ. You know, that should be the goal for all of us. So it's, it's just like... Yeah, we're here for a short time, but I mean, his book was written, you know, to accomplish whatever he's written in this short time. So you should, wouldn't you want to experience him to the fullest that you can before you're going to go home with him? But it's just like, even when you go home, you're going to be judged according to your works and get rewards for what you did and didn't do here. So like, you're going to have to live with that forever. <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like it's just about rewards. Like his presence is not enough. It's enough, but like, just take that into consideration. Like, um... All of us, when we finally get home to be with the Lord, you know, all of us brothers and sisters or whatever, like, you know, your rewards are going to be due to your ministry, how many people you helped get saved, how many people you taught about the Lord, taught to obey his commandments. He says that those who teach his commandments and actually do them is going to be greater in the kingdom. So even when you do go home, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be comfortable with just, okay, well, I got the Holy Spirit, I'm going to heaven. Like, but you, you're still going to have other believers in heaven around you that are that have a lot more stuff than you do because they actually lived out their book. They completed it. That's what Paul said. Like when he finally died, he was like, all right, I did everything I was supposed to do. So it's, it's nothing left for me to do. So you shouldn't just be living for you. Be living until the point where is my work complete? Everything that you have written in your book for me to do, Lord. Jesus did it. Paul did it. I'm sure a whole bunch of other saints did it. Now I can be comfortable with leaving. Even if it's at 36. I did what you wanted me to do. That's the only purpose I was put here for. It's just, it's just weird to think like any other way. It's almost very strange that people even think that way. Like, I don't want to just be here experiencing earth and experiencing life with no purpose. Or um, never having accomplished anything that God set out for me to do. That was the whole point in him manifesting and fleshing me out was to do what he wanted me to do. And I didn't do any of that. And let's say you do go to heaven. You don't have any rewards for your works. You didn't help anybody get saved. You're just here. And it's like, yeah, God's presence is enough. You're saved from eternal damnation. But like, look at all your brothers and sisters. They got mansions <laughs> and like horses and like all this stuff over here because they actually fulfilled their book. You didn't do anything. You know, you let all the other Christians do the ministry and you just kind of sat on whatever, you know, God probably wanted you to do. Don't sit in YouTube, do it forever. At some point, like we all we all have work to do here. Like we should all be flourishing in the new Jerusalem when he comes back. I want to come visit your mansion too. We can have mansion parties, like you know. But if you're just looking at one saint that has all these crowns and all these rewards of what they did here, it's gonna kind of make you feel like, dang, like 
there's there's this guy on YouTube I was watching his heaven testimony I think he died or something I think he was an unbeliever first and then he died I think he repented before he died it was something strange like that he asked the Lord to save him from hell and then he went to the courts of heaven where the angels opened up a book about his life he said it was one page long <laughs> It was one page. He said he said even being in heaven and even being in the presence of God, he said he felt so crunchy because all these other saints, he saw all these other books of all these other people in that book room and they were thick thick books of all the things that these Christians had done and his was one page long. So it's like you made it into the kingdom. You're here with the Lord. Praise God. I'd rather that than you know you being hell obviously but he just he said even being there you still feel that like it, he said he, he said when he was looking at Jesus he said into Jesus's eyes that Jesus had a deep sadness because there was so much he wanted that man to fulfill and there were so many works he could have done through him but at the same time the Lord had this peace and his love in his eyes like he was happy that he was there but you didn't do anything and it's just it's just sad like you only have one page bro in your book like <laughs> that's really bad that's not good at all it's not funny. <laughs> I can laugh because he went to heaven anyway, but it's just like, oh my god, like you had one page. <laughs> that is so terrible. Like, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I'm sure the Lord would be nice. Like, he would still let us, you know, partake of everything in the New Jerusalem, you know. He wouldn't just leave us out of certain banquets and feastings, but it wouldn't be like that. But it's just like. Is this a sense of pride that the one that the Lord wants you to have? Like you should be proud of yourself that you yielded to the Lord, that you allowed Him to use you for this ministry. You know, get your reward when you go home. That's what it's there for, you know. But for, to have one page, like man, don't let that be y'all. He's back now, so he he's coming. He came back, and I hopefully hopefully he's building up. He's storing up his treasures in heaven because that was a hot mess. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do with one page. <laughs> Even if I just got a YouTube plaque in heaven, like, I can't just have one page, like, I mean, no works at all. No. No. So, sow your spiritual life there, here. Like, let your focus be on the kingdom here. Don't live for this life. Sow for your spiritual life later. It's just, so I can come to y'all house and eat up all y'all spiritual food. Okay. So yeah, so the third reason could just be, um, yeah, the Father may just have you in a season of rest. He may not want you to work. Um, it's been a lot of different factors for me. Um, for example, I didn't share this with y'all. I think I did. I probably deleted it. One of the interviews I had recently, because I was like begging God for a job like crazy, and I went into the interview and I felt so grilled and so intimidated. I had an altar of rejection come up, a little child altar of rejection come up in the interview. I had to like suppress myself from crying. I couldn't control it. I, I literally cannot control it when stuff like that happens. It was not me. It was not the 26 year old mature Brandy. It was some fragmented part of me that came up in the interview just because she felt intimidated by the woman interviewing me because we were bringing up stuff that happened on um, past jobs that was traumatizing for me. And I literally left the interview wanting to kill myself. It, it was some part of me that was just, I felt so devastated and like somebody just killed my spirit. It was not a bad interview. It was just that fragment that came up. The woman was nice, but bringing up that old stuff and I could just feel like when I came home, the Lord just started pouring into my spirit. And he was like, this is why I don't want you to work. Like you want to work. You want to go get money. You want to do all this stuff. Like I'm not trying to keep you from doing that, but you can't handle certain things right now. You still need healing. A lot of, you still have a lot of fragments and altars that can't take certain things that are abusive to other people it could be normal a normal you know work or job atmosphere but I, I didn't know that until I experienced it that day and I came home and I told the Lord I said you know what I said you just want me to if you just want me to rest and just stay home I'll do it because now I see after experiencing that altar just come up and that I can't even control something like that so God forbid you actually got hired and that happened again you can't even control it when it happens because you need healing in that part it's, it's not me getting emotional. It literally felt like a, a fragment kind of came up and she was intimidated. <laughs> you know what was going on. So like, I, I didn't even know that he was keeping me at home to rest like for that reason. Even afterwards, I still was just trying to like find a job anyway. 
So I'm like, well, maybe I can just find something that's not as intimidating. But so it could just be, it could be so many factors to why the Lord is not allowing you to work that you don't know about. So for me, if you're dealing with something similar, it could be something like that. He he loves you so much. You're still his baby girl regardless, especially if you have a fragment child altar. He does not want her to be abused. You may be in a mature place mentally. There, that could be a more core part of you that's more mature to handle certain stuff. But that part of you, that little part getting hurt is enough to break his heart. And it's enough to send you into a whole spiral of spiritual warfare that you don't even, you're not ready for. So it could just be something like that. Um... And like I said, it could just be uh, what I shared about David Eels in his book in the first video, how the Lord had David Eels in a season of rest and uh, he was not allowing him to work even as a man and as an elder, he was not allowing him to work because he wanted to show him and his family how he could provide for them. And he, they were experiencing so many crazy supernatural things take place, so it could be that. So this just confirms that um, scripture is true, you know, if, if you don't work, you don't eat, that part is true, but it doesn't take away from the fact that God can have some Christians, every Christian he may not have in a season of working. He may want this particular Christian or this particular group of Christians in a season of rest. Uh, maybe you need it. Maybe God has something coming for you in the next season that's, that's going to require a lot more spiritual warfare or it actually is a mandate and it could be a situation to where the kind of ministry that you're being led to, you should probably soak up as much time as you can get with God now. Because once you get there, you're going to be busy 24-7. You're not going to have that time to spend with God like you have right now. It could be something like that. So it may not even be a generational curse. It may not even be um, that you're not following the law of attraction with uh, seeking the kingdom first. It may not be any of those things. It could be more than one of those things. But sometimes it could just be God's sovereign will. I just don't want you to work right now. I just want you to rest. I want you to use this season of this time to just get to know me better because where I'm leading you, you're going to need this kind of relationship with me. And I've, I've said this uh, in other videos too, that for some of us, which I think I said it for myself as well, had you been that person working a nine to five, you would not have the relationship with God that you have right now <laughs> because because you don't have time. I think I did. I just do a video like that. I did a recent one. Um, yeah, I did, because I had my head covering and my hair was kind of out. Um, and I was talking about how it's about making time for God. And a lot of people, God puts in seasons of isolation, um, like myself. And he'll use us to minister to other people who are working jobs like that. So he can have other children in seasons of working where they probably can't access his presence as... Um, as much as the person that they're learning from. So he'll have the person in a season of learning. He's not going to keep them there forever. But he'll have the person in a season of teaching and doing ministry. So that you can come and eat from them. Which you would have gotten if you had time to spend with them. But you may not have that time. Because you do have to work. So it's not the same for every Christian. So like everything the Bible says is true. A lot of those spiritual laws are still true. But it could just be different reasons for different Christians. Why certain things are not you know, happening the same way. So... I said that for myself, and to be honest, it's kind of been all three or four of these things for me personally. <laughs> I have had some some where he just didn't want me to work, and I just tried to do it anyway, and I got beat the crap up on the job spiritually, and it was just what he was trying to keep me from, and I, I went and I did it anyway, and I got punished for it, or chastised for it. It could just be a season of rest. It, like I said, it could be a generational. It could be all of those different factors. I mean, just um, make it your duty to ask the Lord to show you which one it is for you. Because regardless of what it is, you want to be in his will, period. And I, one thing I had to tell myself, because, like, I guess I'm so double-minded because all these altars that I deal with. So I kind of think it's, like, three different things at once. It's really sad. Pray for me. <laughs> but um, I remember him telling me one day, he said, well, even if it were Jezebel or some spirit, some principality keeping you from working, you would still have to trust in my sovereignty anyway in the sense that I'm aware that you can't even get out of that web by yourself. So I'm sovereign enough to send you the help if I wanted to, to help you break that so that you could get a job. So even if it's not God's sovereignty in uh, essentially, um, in the sense of like, I don't want you to work right now. It's not a spirit blocking you. It's nothing like that. I just don't want you to work right now. So even if it wasn't that, even if it was a spirit He's still sovereign over the fact of knowing that you can't even fight something like that by yourself in order to break whatever that curse or evil altar is. So if he's not even sending the help, it's still his hand regardless that's like keeping you there for another purpose, obviously. So either way it goes, they're, they're not that powerful. Um, 
if something needs to be broken in your life, like a curse or something like that, or you need some other Christian assistance, he would send it to you or send you to them. And uh, also, my, my last reason would just be that um, sometimes it's just seasonal. Sometimes, like, God will have a career season for you. He'll have, like, a season where all this stuff is appointed for you. It may just not be this one. So this may just be the season for you to spend time with him, focus on him, get to know him. And then maybe the next year or the next month or whenever that the next season is according to his ordained, you know, schedule, <laughs> you know, um, that's your season for it to work and to do all that stuff. So sometimes the stuff is just seasonal and it's just how he has uh, orchestrated. So I mean, I have anything negative to do with anything. It's just how he's uh, laid everything out. Um, it's coming, but it's not right now. So before I end this video, I was going to say, yeah, when it comes to working. Okay, so I think I was saying, uh, let's say like you do have a job in your season of rest or a season where the Lord had you in the wilderness where he wants to teach you more about himself or show you that he can provide for you. Um, even if you are working as a Christian, the Lord does not ever want our jobs to replace our dependency and our trust in him and his ability to provide for us. Your job, the way scripture literally teaches about jobs, yes, it, first of all, it's a blessing from God. All good blessings, all good things come from the Father of lights, okay? Any good spiritual blessing. Now, I think that's James or some other scripture. So the way you should see your job, it's easy to look at your job as a sense of independency, um, abstract from God. God's not the one providing for me. I'm doing this myself because I went to school. I got my college degree. I'm a teacher or I'm, you know, some therapist or some counselor or, you know, whatever it is you're doing. You went, you got a degree for it and you basically, uh, you feel like you self-made. You may give God some kind of credit or glory for it in a very abstract way, but you don't, you truly don't see it as God giving you anything because you got it for yourself. So your job can easily be seen as something, uh, your own works, which is not spiritual rest. It's not. It's more like a works righteousness mentality. It's your ability to provide for yourself. Your security, and the test would be is if you lost that job. Everything you went to school for like 12 years for, for 12 years for, you went to school for this job, you got your degree, you've been here for like a decade plus, you know, your family is set. Let that job be taken away from you, and it's going to show what your faith was truly in. It was in your own security, in your own works. It never had anything to do with God. So sometimes God will allow that to happen to you, just like he did with Job. Job was freaking rich. Job had a lot of stuff, and he stripped it away from him. So it, it will really be a test of whether your confidence and your security and your trust is in your own works and your own ability to provide for yourself it doesn't matter how much credit you give to God for having the job. Your trust was in the job and it wasn't in him. Because how the Bible teaches how a Christian should, should see a job, even if you went to school and got the degree, even if, you know, it's, it's a blessing either way, it teaches you to see it as you working in God's kingdom and working unto the Lord. So it's, it's, it's still a spiritual atmosphere of being a kingdom-minded person. You're not there to serve your boss. You're there to serve others in a general sense of being a servant of God, and you're there to do your work perfectly and have a good work performance because you, your mind should be, I'm working unto the Lord. My reward's going to come from Him, whether I get a promotion or not. It's not about that material livelihood or um, earthly livelihood about the job for me. The spiritual atmosphere of a Christian's heart when it comes to a job is to be serving God and His kingdom. That's how the Bible teaches how you should see your job. So there's no room for independence or something like that. It's, it's more like, okay, well, God has blessed this brother with a season of rest, and God has blessed me with a season of uh, working. And if he has you working, it's to bless other people, always. If you're not doing it directly through your job, if you don't have a job where you're already blessing other people, your pay will be to bless other people. So even if you are working as a Christian, mind you what I said in the first video, God's original plan was for us to be resting in the garden. So he's restored that back to you in the sense that we're all supposed to be resting in Christ spiritually. So your earthly job is not really taking the place of God's provision. It's for you to bless other people. It's for you to serve God in the place that you are and to be a light for him. That's actually why you have a job. I hope that renews your mind, you know. And, and, you know, it allows you to put your faith back in Jesus providing for you. So that way, if you were to lose that job, 
like a perfect example would be this government shutdown stuff that's happening. All the people that's working for the federal government. I have an uncle. I have an uncle who's a correctional officer. He has been working for the federal government at this prison for years. And this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Look what Trump just did. There's the government shutdown. They can't even get paychecks. So just imagine how many Christians that are correctional officers, that are working for the federal government in some other way, they put so much security and faith in this job because you set, that's a lot of money. That people make a lot, of, I tried to be a correctional officer once, I know they make a lot of money. So it's a job where like you've been here for a decade, you feel like you're secure, you're a good worker, you've been consistent, you've been faithful, you haven't ever left, you ain't even quit, you ain't never been late. You would think that in an earthly sense, the odds of you losing this job or something like that happening would be slim to none, but it happened. So this, it just reminds you that this job is probably only given to you for a season for the purpose that God wanted it to serve, the purpose he wanted it to yield. It could have been to bless other people. It could have very well been to bless you, but not ever taking away from the fact that this has come from the Lord for his purpose. It's not just for you to be self-made, to be independent, and to be trusting in your paycheck, your uh, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly paycheck. No. He will take your job away if it's doing that. That's not what your job is for as a Christian. Maybe for the world, they need it because they don't have a covenant with Yahweh. Unless they're serving the devil or something and have some contract with him where they get filthy freaking rich. But no, the world are dependent on their paychecks because they don't have covenant promises. They don't know the Lord. They are not born again. They have to, they have to labor Adam's way. You don't labor when you work. You work for God's purpose. To serve others and to be a servant in the kingdom of God and where he has planted you. That's all your job is for. But your provision comes from God. Whether he chose to give it to you through a job or some other means. He can have you sitting and resting pretty, not working and having money coming to you straight from heaven if he wanted to, you know. I think I made a video about that too. But I'm about to go get off of here and see why this baby is crying. Um, I hope this blesses y'all and I have to go eat. I will talk to y'all later. I hope this message really blesses you. Y'all leave y'all's comments down below. I think it was a really, really good message. And it's going to help us, you know, keep this stuff in mind as well. Uh, but just take your heart off of it. I mean, the Lord knows that you need it. But my thing is, like, if your daily needs are not being met, if you don't even have money, grocery money to put into your house, if you don't even have, you can't pay your car note, that's when I would come to the Lord and start asking him, okay, Father, is there anything in the way you need to show me spiritually I need to see? But if it's just stuff that you want, you know, James says that, you know, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you receive not because you ask so that you may spend it and consume it upon your own lust. So if you want stupid material stuff, like, don't go to God asking about stuff like that. I mean, he's here to provide your needs. All the other stuff is going to follow, too, if you're, if you're uh, following him or obeying him, just like he did with Solomon. So he'll let you have some fun stuff, too, here and there. But don't make that, like, your main focus. But... So yeah, basically to conclude this video, if you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing, biblically, obeying his commandments, fellowshipping with Jesus, spending time with him, abiding in his heart, obeying, you know, convictions when he brings them up to you, everything should just come naturally. So, but just take your heart off of it. Don't worry about anything because it's his job to take care of you. That's your dad. So, and you're going to forget everything I just said. I'm going to forget it. So now we have a video to come back to. <laughs> Anytime we, we stress and are struggling with finances or something, so I'm hungry and I'm gonna go talk to y'all later because I have to go by. Turn off. Turn off. I hate this phone so much. Turn the video off. Turn the video off.